All right, everybody, Dr. Ray Pitch here. We're going to be talking about um, something that I'm not as familiar with, which is why I wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. It's receiving some, some uh, um, attention here uh, through all the um, states in the U.S. and Canada, places that I'm licensed in. They'll send me updates on what's happening in that region. And um, obviously, I live in Las Vegas, so these are concerns that may or may not pertain to me locally. But because of vet triage and operating on a global scale, I want to make sure that our veterinary community, pet owners, partnerships, uh, organizations are familiar with these up-to-date things. And so we're going to talk about New World Screw Worm, uh, or also known as Cochleomyia hominivorax. So I'm just going to read this out, and if folks are interested, I hope you find this useful. There's two documents we're going to go through, this one and one behind it. Um, there may be some repetition there, but uh, let's get into it. So New World Screw Worm is a devastating pest of livestock. It can affect any warm-blooded animal. It can also affect people. Untreated screw worm infestations can be fatal to livestock, wildlife, and humans. Not controlling the pest in a livestock population can damage a country's economy. Yikes. Distribution. This parasite is endemic in Cuba, Haiti, and Dominican Republic, as well as countries in South America. Since 2006, the U.S. and Panama have maintained a barrier uh, barrier zone in eastern Panama. This barrier prevents this disease from moving north from South America to screw worm free areas in Central and North America. In 2023, APHIS, APHIS is in charge of, uh, for example, with veterinarians, uh, APHIS is in charge of veterinarians writing health certificates for animals that are trying to not travel domestically, so, so between states, but internationally and to some degree to like Hawaii and also it also they also have control over if you're trying to transfer a non-dog or cat species as well like exotics and birds and things like that so that's my familiarity with APHIS so in 2023 APHIS confirmed an unprecedented number of these worms cases in Panama since then cases have been detected in every Central American country and Mexico hosts this can, can affect livestock, pets, wildlife, occasionally birds, in rare cases people. The pest can infest a wide variety of wounds, from tick bites to cuts to dehorning or branding wounds. Infestations are very common in the navels of newborn animals and in the genital regions of their mothers. Description, adult screwworm flies have orange eyes. Here it is here. An adult screwworm fly. A metallic blue or green body and three dark stripes that are across along their backs. The central, the center stripe begins partway down the back and appears shorter than the outer stripes. Screwworm larvae, also known as maggots, burrow into a wound, feeding as they go, like a screw diving into wood. Driving into wood, the maggots cause extensive damage by tearing at the host tissues with sharp mouth hooks. The wound becomes deeper and larger as more maggots hatch and feed on living tissue. Gross. Impact. Uh, these worms can threaten the livelihood of livestock producers. It can cause millions of dollars for the production losses and economic damage. It also po poses a threat to humans in infested areas. What you can do. Immo immo immediately report signs of screw worms to your local veterinarian, state veterinarian's office, or the USDA. There's a website. Look for the following signs in warm-blooded animals, including pets and birds. Irritated behavior, head shaking, the smell of decay, presence of maggots in a wound. If you travel with a dog to regions affected by screwworm, know that the requirements know the requirements for returning to the U.S. There's another website for travel information. If you live or are traveling in areas affected by screwworm, have your animals inspected before you move. Use available animal checkpoints to prevent spread of this pest. For more information, uh, here's another web, more websites here, and then here's a website down at the bottom, and then here's another picture graphic of this so we'll go into that right now okay um, so flies and maggots what they look like the adult screwworm flies about the size of a common house fly are slightly larger with orange eyes metallic blue or green body three dark stripes along its back the name screwworm is thought to refer to the feeding behavior of the maggots as they borrow or screw into the wound feeding as they go like a screw being driven into wood maggots larvae cause extensive damage by tearing at the host tissue with sharp mouth hooks. The wound can quickly become enlarged and deeper as more maggots hatch and feed on living tissue. And there are some gross pictures. 
mature larvae, magnified mature larvae, screwworm pupae. Oh, they're red. Uh, let's see. Report any suspected cases to your local, to your state animal health officer or a USDA veterinarian. Yep, yep, yep. Let's go back up here. How to spot infestation. There's a fly with egg mass on wound. Wow, that is so gross. Uh, Close-up female fly, eggs and maggots on a wound. Um, severe screwer my myiasis on the dog's neck. Yikes. Look at all those parasites. <gasps> so this is the dog's ears here and here. This is the back of his neck. Whoa. Infested deer. Oh, Lord. With extensive tissue damage and flies attached to an animal wound. Wow. All right. Infestation. What to look for? Any warm-blooded animal, including birds and humans, with maggots and wounds or other body openings like nose, ears, umbilicus, genitalia that are draining or enlarging. Animals that may have recently suffered from a wound or surgical procedure. Wounds as small as tick bites attract flies. Uh, egg masses may be round. Maybe around or in the wound, larvae may be visible in the third day of infestation because they feed on live flesh. The maggots may burrow deep into wounds or openings, while other species may appear around the outer surface. Screwworm infestations are very painful. Animals become depressed, stop eating, and separate themselves. Secondary infection can occur. In the wound, left untreated animals may die within one week of being infested. There's a QR code, and let's see some more information down here. New World Screwworm, and there's the picture of the fly again. Uh, New World Screwworm myiasis is a serious disease that can affect livestock, pets, wildlife, and in rare cases, people. It is a painful condition in which the larvae or maggots of the fly, Cochiomaya hominivorax, borrow into the flesh of a living animal. This causes serious, often deadly damage to the animal. The economic impact is severe. During the 20th century, the presence of this disease cost the U.S. livestock industry more than $100 million annually. The flies spend most of their time in forests and other wooded areas, but will also seek host animals in pastures and fields if available. Open wounds attract the flies and are what they feed on and live in to survive. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, needs your help to keep these parasites out of our country. Read on to learn more about it, what infestation looks like, and where to report possible cases of it. Together, we can protect the United States from this disease. Here's some literature in case you guys want. And then let's scroll up here. Infestation, what happens? Squirm infestations begin when a female fly lays eggs on a wound or orifice of a live, warm-blooded animal. Female flies are attracted to the odor of a wound or opening, such as the nasal or eye openings, umbilicus of a newborn, genitalia, Wounds can be as small as a tick bite. May attract a female to feed. One female can lay up to 3,000 eggs in her lifespan. Eggs hatch into larvae that borrow into the wound and feed on living flesh. After about seven days of feeding, larvae drop to the ground, borrow into the soil, and pupate. That's always a gross word, pupate. The adult screwworm fly emerges from the soil after seven to 54 days, hmm. depending on temperature and humidity. Female flies mate after three days, and males can mate within 24 hours of maturation. Oof, they get busy quick. Life cycle. The adult screwworm flies attracted to the smell of an open wound and lays her eggs in the edges of it. Within hours, the eggs hatch into larvae, which borrow into the wound to feed. This worsens the wound and attracts more flies, which lay more eggs. The larvae feed for about a week and then fall off and borrow into the ground to pupate. And after at least seven days, an adult fly emerges. All right. Sterile insect technique. How does it work? Let's see this. To eradicate this disease, the sterilized pupae may be placed in chambers at strategic locations throughout an infested area. Sterile flies may also be dispersed from aircraft over larger areas. As male flies emerge from the chambers, they seek out mates. Because female screwworm flies mate just once in their lifespan, the only eggs she will lay are not viable and will not develop into maggots. The population ultimately dies out as more sterile screwworm flies are released. The population of fertile screwworm flies dies off naturally over a few life cycles. In October of 2016, USDA and the Florida Department of Agriculture and Cultural Services announced the detection of this disease. It, has, it was successfully eradicated by March 27, so less than a year later, using the same method to eliminate screwworm from the U.S. once again. 
This was the first local infestation in the United States in more than 30 years and the first infestation in Florida in over 50 years. It's, what's good about this type of thing, I think what they're kind of indirectly stressing, is that we're not using like pesticides and chemicals to kill these bugs. We're trying a more uh, surgical approach, let's say, to it. What's the impact? Another incursion into the U.S. could cost millions of dollars from livestock losses, trade embargoes, and eradication work. Pets, livestock, wildlife, and even humans can suffer and die. 2016 and 2017 outbreak by the numbers. 136 wildlife cases, 15% of endangered key deer died from squirrel infestation, nine domestic animal cases, over 17,000 animal inspected at checkpoint, leaving surveillance zone, more than 188 million sterilized pupae placed in 35 sites over six months, $3.2 million in taxpayer dollars spent. Sterilized pupae released into infested area. Look at that. All right. And of course, this video is being made in, um, in uh, 2025, so, so this, this data is kind of old, but still. And then here's the U.S. history of eradication. An eradication program to remove this disease from the U.S. began in 1957. It used a biological control technique, sterilized insects, developed by the USDA's Agricultural Research Service. This method is an ecologically safe and proven way to eradicate fly populations by taking advantage of the fly's own biology. The sterile insect approach eradicated this disease from the U.S. in 1966. So it started in 57 and then uh, less than 10 years later. In a cooperative program, the Panama United States Commission for the Eradication and Prevention of Screwworm maintains a permanent sterile fly barrier along the border of Panama and Colombia to prevent the reestablishment of screwworms. So there you go, folks. There's a close-up of the picture. You can see the, of the fly. You can see the three stripes on its back, um, so you'll know what, what it looks like. But there you have it. So take it for what you will. Um, this is why we stress the importance of um, animal travel and herd health and why veterinarians are so important with pandemics, whether they affect animals alone or both animals and people, or sometimes that they affect only people. Uh, veterinarians are key to these efforts to try and identify and prevent, and oftentimes we are the first line of defense to identify these diseases, so it's important to be aware of it. Thanks so much for, su for subscribing to the channel and supporting me, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.